Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. Wednesday, and as mentioned, all of our guests today, including J.P. Berry, standing by, brought to you by our much-valued title sponsor, Able Auctions, ableauctions.ca. More on them a little bit later. Just before we get to J.P., Delaney's okay, Tyron Langley inbox. We've had a lot of this. This is from Chris in Burke Mountain. Here's a simple solution. How about a healthy PD to prop up the Canucks? power play mm. and with that we bring in uh, the man who represents Elias Pettersson among others including Tyler Myers JP Berry from CAA Sports thanks for doing this sir again how are you I'm very good thank you guys good morning to you uh, I can't, can't thank you enough JP hey what can you tell us about Elias Pettersson and how much his knee was bothering him for uh, so much of the Canucks season JP yeah I mean he was as Leah said himself he he was battling through something but lots of players do i i kind of feel like the whole situation was a bit of a catch-22 for him because if he says look it's nothing whatever then everybody just questions his play and questions his abilities and then if he says i was battling with something that opened up a whole other line of questioning so i, th I thought he was in a pretty awkward spot but at the end of the day he's going to say he was dealing with something and uh you know obviously it was bothering him i think where's his confidence level at jp yeah, I think any player that has, you know, especially a high-end player like that that has a tough time um, in the playoffs, it doesn't help it, but it's going to, you know, he's going to have to come back and fight this for the future. Uh, JP, let's get over to Myers. Uh, there's word this morning that uh, a deal could be close uh, with you and the Canucks on Myers. Where are contract talks with him, and are you close, uh, JP? I think the team needs to get together and have a plan. I mean, they know we want we want to be there. Um, we've had that much conversation even before the season ended. So I'm going to wait for Patrick to decide what what our timing is. I think <laughs> I don't think we're first in line. So I think we have to see see what happens here. And you you you've stated uh, for quite some time now that Tyler would love uh, to be back with the Vancouver Canucks. JP, he's got the house in Kelowna. He doesn't want to go anywhere, does he? <laughs> No, he likes the city. His family likes the city. He likes playing for the Canucks. He's especially enjoyed um, the new coaching staff. I know he's spoken really highly about the coaches, and he's probably in, you know he feels better than he than he ever has. So he he really like to stay and play. You know, see if they can finish this up and have more success. Obviously. Hey JP, uh, he had a great year. He played a ton of minutes, uh, and he's had a tough time with the media and Canucks Twitter over the years. But this year, I mean, t talk about the improved play, and uh, everyone was pretty impressed with, uh, you know, how we played this year. Yeah, I think, I mean, it, I think the whole team, you know, help, they help each other when they all play well, but I think it particularly helped Tyler. I know we spent a lot of time with, with the coaches on, on how to play and how to sort of set his game up for success, and I, I feel like we saw the results this year. J.P. Quinn Hughes, uh, captain, first year, had a great year. Uh, we will be very surprised, J.P., if he doesn't win the Norris. Uh, uh, talk about that kid, his season, and, and, and the pressures of being a, a captain in the Canadian city. How did you think he fared? No, I think this was his, his real, true breakout year. And, uh, I mean, we looking forward to seeing him in Vegas, and I think he will. I, I do think he's going to win that award, so I'm excited for him. JP, uh, Quinn said he wasn't, at, at the end of the season interviews, during the end of the season interviews, he said he wasn't injured, wasn't hurting. Uh, c can you understand why, especially harkening back to the Nashville series when he was punished left and right, can you understand why some people uh, have a hard time believing that? Yeah, I, I mean, yes, you know, I think I think these players, we have to take them at face value if they, if they don't. You know, if he thinks it wasn't enough to affect his play, then you know, they, one's going to answer one way and say, "Look, I don't want to, I don't want to say anything," and another may say, "Well, it did affect my play." But like I said, I really, I really hate it when the players come up there because mm -hmm. everyone wants answers, and it, it, it's just a difficult spot when there, there's no clear-cut injury. If there's just you know bruises and bumps, then 
maybe that's we have to have a you know a difficult different way of asking these questions i i, I just I, I found the whole thing kind of awkward yeah you, you you think it was uncomfortable for you you should talk to philip heronic but that's a story for another day. <laughs> hey, JP, back to back to uh, Elias Pettersson for a second. Uh, there are reports out here, and what do you make of these uh, reports that that uh, had Elias uh, saying he was dealing uh, with a knee injury, and and reports out there saying that that took the Canucks by surprise. Well, I mean, uh, some of the injuries that these players have, I mean, they know about them with the training staff, but they're not enough to get to the level of being seen by a doctor every day. So I know that, you know, he, he was seen prior to the playoffs, but I don't think he felt at any time during the playoffs that it was going to keep him out of the lineup. So it's just, a, it's just a, a fine line where he's just being honest that he wasn't a hundred percent, but he's, I don't think he's making any excuses either. So I think we have to just listen to what he was saying. And, you know, you can tell just by the look on his face that he's disappointed and feels he could, could have played better. So I think he will. Yeah. And JP, can you put into words the, the caps going up? How, how busy you're going to be in the next uh, couple of months? Yeah, it's already started for us, but we're we're kind of we're in that waiting prepared mode where the teams are doing their homework, and um, we got a lot of meetings next week in Buffalo with pretty much every team in the league, and hopefully we can get going. But generally, I don't you don't go into high gear until the last ten days of June, mm. so we'll just have to we'll just have to be ready. JP, the, the cap going up, can you give us a, a little indication, uh, not just this year, but you, you know in the, uh, it, it, you know, in, it, in the bubble and you know what happened, the cap didn't go up and, and all that stuff uh, with COVID. Um, when is it going to go up to maybe 90, 95, 99? Like, do you have a projection on when it could really, really go up high? Well, I think the momentum is setting, setting the stage for it to go up high, and that's what we're hoping for. We're seeing... Obviously, in all sports right now, there's a growth with revenues. Now, we rely more in the arena revenues, but I think they're very strong, and our sponsorship revenues are strong. So um, we put sort of the debt behind us, and I think we're going to see some big jumps as long as the the product is as good as it was that we're seeing right now. JP, we can't thank you enough for doing this like uh, like we just talked about. We know you're busy or are going to get busy, and again, thanks for making time. Thank you very much, guys. We'll talk soon. You bet.